Hi everyone, today I want to talk to you about some experiments that I did over the summer with growing in a higher density pattern in the deep water culture system. Before we get started, I wanted to send a thanks to all my Patreon contributors, especially our top contributors who are trueaquaponics.com, greenlifeplanet.net, and glassbottleoutlet.com. They've been with us from the beginning of our Patreon campaign and I really appreciate them hanging out with us through the years. I had checked in with a bunch of my hydroponic growing friends and asked them why they don't do seedling transplants uh, throughout the course of their lettuce growing. And basically they came back and said that it was too labor intensive to do that which I probably could agree with. However, being the experimenting type of person, I wanted to see uh, really on paper and in reality uh, how expensive that really is. So throughout the summer, I did a bunch of experiments and recorded the data so we can get a somewhat scientific uh, answer from whether or not it is cost effective to transplant. Originally, I started planting my seedlings in these 30-hole rafts, shown on the right, and then transferring them into my 15-hole rafts, keeping in mind that these rafts are smaller than a typical 2x4 raft. And then I came up with making these slits in here, and now I'm getting 60 plants per raft. So basically four times the number of plants per square foot than a standard raft was holding. After a few weeks, they're ready for transplanting. The ones on the left are the higher density, they have good coverage. The ones on the right, still good coverage, but there is some light still making it down to the raft, so definitely could have a higher concentration in there. Here I am moving some of the plants from the 30-hole rafts into the 15-hole rafts. It only takes a couple of seconds to move each plant, especially with these 2-inch holes. The roots just drop right in and don't get caught on anything. Same thing applies for the 60 position rafts. They pop right out and easily transplant into the 15 hole rafts. One of the nice things about doing the transplant is it gives you a little bit of time to inspect your plants and toss out any of the ones that really aren't going to be growing and therefore saving some growing space uh, down the road. So the final leg of your growing, you're only growing your strongest plants. Plus you can quickly check them for any bugs or diseases like aphids. You can see when I'm all done that half of that 30 hole raft is gone and just a quarter of the 60 hole raft is gone so it really does save a lot of space. Once summer came along I wanted to get some more accurate data so I made up these 2x4 rafts which are fairly standard size and I'll take a minute to show you how these are made. I made up this wooden template that's the exact width that I needed. Uh, one of the things is that if it's too wide of a cut, the grow grips will just fall right out of the raft, and if it's too narrow, it's a little bit too tight and hard to work with them. On each raft, I just made a tick mark every three inches. This will give me seven sets of slots. And each uh, set of slots will hold 20 plants, so we get 140 plants per raft. To cut the slots, I'm just using a standard roto zip tool and it has a plain sheetrock bit in it. A couple of tricks are to make sure the bit is set in the collet so that there's no cutting edge where it would be running along the wood. Next is to make sure that you put something underneath your cut so you don't drive the bit into your table or your floor. And lastly is while you're cutting to make sure you're moving fast enough so that the styrofoam doesn't melt into the bit.
I also gave it a quick washing to get all the foam dust off of it. And if I was going to use this over a long period of time, I'd probably put a coat of paint over it to keep the foam from degrading in the UV light. You may have seen my method for starting lettuce seedlings in the past, but if not, I'll leave a link uh, somewhere here for you. But basically, these 10 by 20 trays, I can hold anywhere from 700 to 1,000 plants to get them started. So it saves a lot of room versus uh, getting things started in various plugs. So I basically take each loose seedling and put it into a grow grip and slide it into its slot. Like I said earlier, this uh, particular bed will hold 140 plants. Here's the outdoor system before I fully had it up and running. I forgot to mention too that I'm using one inch foam board instead of the one and a half or two inch that most people use. Um, it's a lot cheaper and it also doesn't take as much space up when you're trying to store it. So once again, here I am transplanting the seedlings into the rafts. I'm going from the 140 hole raft into a 32 hole raft. After doing this a few times, I did find that it was far easier just to pull the slotted raft out and do the moving from one raft to the next at a workbench versus just bending over the deep water culture bed. You can see here I skipped over the first two plants because they were sort of the runt of the pack and I'm just planting some of the stronger plants. If I have the extra room I would plant these two but in most cases I just toss these because they're not going to be as strong as the other plants. Let's take a look at some of the costs. Let's say we had paid somebody $15 an hour to do some work. I decided just to compare using grow grips versus rock wool. You could use uh, some of the other plugs that are out there. But for me to transplant 120 plants, it averages to seven seconds per plant. Now that also includes the extra transplant going from the 140 position raft to the 32. So that's why the time is a lot more. Uh, versus the rock wool where it's a one-time planting and basically this time is to uh, take it out of its seedling tray and break the rock wool apart and put it in its final raft. So looking at the seconds per plant we can put in what the labor cost is and we're essentially adding roughly three cents per plant for using the grow grips and one cent for using rock wool. Now looking at the material costs of the grow grip versus the rock wool, um, if you buy in bulk you can get them for around 14 cents a piece. Rock wool is uh, around 7 cents. I looked up the bulk rate on farm tech. I know I've seen people get these uh, for less than that but we're just going to use 7 cents for now. And then the average use, uh, because the grow grips are reusable, um, I put in basically a three, three year life cycle they actually could last longer than that. I'm still using my original uh, prototypes and it's been uh, three years and they're still working fine versus the rock wool where uh, they can only be used once and then thrown away. So the cost per use uh, amateurizing out the original purchase price we're still at uh, a little over seven cents a piece for rock wool and less than a penny a piece uh, for the grow grips. So based off of that, with the cost of the material and the cost of the labor, it comes to be adding eight cents per plant for using rock wool versus four cents per plant for using the grow grips. Now for a greenhouse like the one that we're planting, if we had roughly 90,000 plants per year in there, the cost of material and labor would be roughly $3,400 versus $7,400 for using the rock wool. And these numbers can hop around. Let's say we got this cost of the uh, rock wool down to, let's say, four cents a piece. Even at that price, it's still cheaper uh, to, to use the grow grips versus uh, the rock wool. 
So now let's look at the capacity of what our greenhouse could do based off of the concentrated raft that holds 140 and the 32 hole rafts. And we also put in a growth time total in the raft times of 10 weeks. And I put in uh, two weeks of time in the concentrated raft and finished growing out the remaining eight weeks in the standard raft. So based off the capacity of our proposed greenhouse, that can hold 315 rafts. And breaking that down with some magic calculations, that means that we can hold 63 concentrated rafts and 252 standard rafts, and giving us a plant capacity in each of those sets of 8,800 and 8,000 plants. Now if we play with these numbers a little bit, let's say we increased it up to three weeks here and then down to seven weeks, the capacity really uh, starts changing around a lot. Put that back. So based off of the 10 weeks, we would, uh, if we were growing full time year round, that would be uh, 5.2 turns uh, per year. So basically we would use um, each grow grip five times in a year. And from the previous screen, that's why we did uh, 15 turns for a three year life expectancy of the grow grips. And we just put in a $1.25 uh, per plant uh, for revenue. So based off of the current numbers here, the uh, system capacity is um, 16,000 plants. And if we only did uh, standard rafts, it would hold uh, just 10,000 plants meaning an annual capacity of 87,000 plants versus the 52. So just by putting in these concentrated rafts uh, for the two weeks, um, our capacity can go uh, up, increase by uh, 35,000 plants. Now if you look at that from a revenue standpoint, we would go from $109,000 in revenue at $1.25 a plant down to 65,000 if we're using just the standard rafts. So that's an increase of revenue of $44,000. So it doesn't uh, take a whole lot with using something like this, at least in my opinion, uh, to uh, justify uh, hiring somebody to uh, move plants from one raft to another. Now, even if we change this up to three weeks, the uh, annual capacity and the revenue goes up even a little bit more because we just have such a higher concentration of these. Um, even if you just did it for one week, um, you still have an increased capacity. A little bit harder to uh, justify having somebody in here, um, but um, two weeks is a, a good, really good comfortable number to keep those plants in those uh, concentrated rafts. So just by uh, playing around with these numbers a little bit, um, it's uh, pretty amazing to see how much uh, you can play with these numbers. So something to think about, something to ponder if it's worth the aggravation and time to uh, deal with transplanting plants from a concentrated raft into a regular raft. That's about it. I'd be interested to know what your comments are about this. Feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching.